Okay, here I've got a second video from our functions unit. This video is about domain and range. Now, domain and range are basically two vocabulary words, and I'll just give you a brief synopsis, and then we'll look at some examples. Domain is basically the whole set of x values of a function. And the range is your set of y values for the function. So let's say, for example, you have a relation. And I take this relation, and I can just look. If this is the whole relation, 3, 7, the or these ordered pairs, 4, 6, 5, 11, and 6, 15. In a nutshell, my domain is that group of numbers, and my range is that group of numbers. The domain is all the x values, the range is all the y values. Or instead of y values, you might call them the dependent variables. And you might call that the domain um, all of your independent variables. We could look at it using a um, mapping diagram. If I had all my x's and y's and I said 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 7, 12, 14, once again, I'm just making up numbers. And when I throw 3 into the box, out pops a 12. When I throw 4 into the box, out pops a negative 7. 5 gives me a 14. And an input of 6 gives me an output of 56. This will be your domain, all the x values. And then this will be your range, all the y values. Now, let's look at a real life example of when we would use domain and range. So let's say, for example, Coach Horn has, let's say he has $25 in his wallet. And every day when I go to lunch, I spend $5 in the cafeteria. Well, this is happening every day. Every day I'm spending that amount. Okay? So, I start with $25, and for every day that passes, I'm spending $5. The amount I have is decreasing by $5 every day. Y, or my dependent variable, is the amount of money I have left. X, or my independent variable, is the number of days that have passed. And so the reason our domain, or in other words, the x values we can use is limited in this situation, is because I'm eventually going to run out of money. Some of you may have already done the math in your head. You know that after five days, I have zero dollars. So your domain here is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, and five days. Because on that sixth day, am I going to be able to buy lunch? No, because I only started with $25. After five days, I've spent all my money. So these are the only input values that we have. These are the only values that I can put in for X right there. And the range is going to correspond with that. Obviously, is my range, or in other words, the amount of money I have, ever going to be higher than $25? No, the highest it will be is $25, and it's decreasing by five, oops, every day. <laughs> so we can see that in sometimes in a real life scenario, my domain, or in other words, my x values will be limited, and my range, or my y values, will be limited as well. That's why it's so important to know the context of a problem and know what's going on with your variables. Which one's dependent, because that will affect your domain, and which one's Excuse me, let me re rephrase that. Which one's dependent because that will affect your range, and which one's independent because that will affect your domain. So, in a nutshell, domain is the set of x values of a function. All the x values that you can have. It's not any one, but it's all of them as a group. Okay? And a range is all the y values that you can have. All the y values as we've seen in our problems. And that's all I got.